This video is just a VOD review, this is not my gameplay, I'm watching someone using an attack weight Greninja, now I've messaged this guy after and found out his builds, that's how you see it on the screen. This guy is one of the top junglers in India, uh, Kazuma from Valhalla, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and this guy is really really good. Um, as a jungler, he's got he uses so many different roles. So I'm just checking out some of the Greninja gameplay, and this is just a voiceover. There are some things I want to talk about because this is such good gameplay to do it. So the first big thing is right here. Okay, it's handling that jungle invader. Notice how he's got his teammate helping him out, which is again this is a five stack. This is what you should be doing, but he does not contest the invader for the buff. He attacks the invader. They just, they 2v1, you can kill it. Okay, especially if you're full attack Greninja, you should be able to kite it and do enough damage so you can kill the thing. Yes, it slows you down a little bit, it's annoying, but remember, if they're invading, they've got one less person in the lane. So you should have an advantage somewhere else. Okay, and I believe the advantage came from the top lane, and well, with an Eevee and a Machop, you kind of need that advantage. So here we've got the first gank. We're gonna see the value of, well, the lack of value um, without a focus band. So again, a lot of damage coming out there um, from the Greninja, but they've got a kite back. Maybe could have taken a berry, maybe not. Gets them pretty low, but here you can see the Greninja is going a little too deep off the base, gets picked off. If the enemies are smart here, they really should have won that. Okay, they've over pushed and they haven't gotten a lot of value out of that. So I think a little bit of a get out of jail free. Um, but also I want to talk on this note about the jungler dying in a lane. Sure, in that situation, it's like, well, what's the harm? Well, notice the Lucario got the kill. That means in the top lane, Lucario has the buffs. Now, if you're a Machop still trying to contest a Lucario, it's hard enough, let alone when it's got buffs. So I'm speaking from a little bit of experience here. In a lane, if you're versing someone, your opponent with buffs, it just makes it, it it's, it's already tough, especially if it's competitive. But if they've got the buffs and they're a skilled player and they know how to use especially that red, uh, that red buff, that makes things really, really challenging. Okay, so again, um, stacking no stacks yet. So takes the opportunity to get a stack down bottom here. A little bit risky, not really, because there's a lot of action going on in the mid. Uh, sacrificing a bit of presence to get uh, some late game value. I think that's probably the correct play there, especially if you are attack weight. Um, but that Gengar's gone up and, and done amazingly, saved the day. So, really, really nice there. However, I'm going to talk purely in the aspect of competitive. This is a 5v5 gameplay. This is top gameplay, okay? We're not doing a solo queue or a duo queue here. I think if you're versing a team that knows you're a stacking jungler or has a suspicion because a lot of these competitive teams, they'll be able to tell either the way you're playing at that first gank, whether you're a stacking jungler or not, or if they just know your team and they know how you play and they know some of your builds. So the first thing is, is that if the laners know it, they can just play passively and they stop you from getting stacks. Okay, now, sure, that's not a bad thing. You might get some of the farm, but if they're playing passively, you're not going to be able to kill and score, especially if they've got a jungle that just comes up, and if you overcommit, that's pretty self-destructive. So that's thing number one. Then that means that you've got to stack later in the game. Okay, when you are scoring, you are visible on the enemy minimap. Now, if you are stacking throughout the game, let's say when a Reggie Lecky is in a top lane and you're the attack damage carry, you're the Greninja, and you're stacking in the second tier bottom, what do you think the enemies are going to do? Okay, they're a five stack, they're coordinated. One of them calls out, or they might they might have a suspicion that you're not there. Oh, the Gren's probably going off to get a stack. Let's hard engage this fight. They just win a 4v5, get an objective, they don't overcommit, and they get a lot of value just because you're trying to invest in some extra attack late game. So again, this is if you're in that losing position, it's, it's really tough because you're sacrificing so much to try and get that late game value. And again, it's not even guaranteed. It's not a guaranteed stack. Okay, stacks are not, they can just send one ranged defender, uh, sorry, one ranged attacker down the bottom. And then what, and, and then, and you can't stack. So 
if the enemies really, really want to stop it, they can. Okay, they can throw on a Nine Tails. The Nine Tails just sits on the base with the Roar Valve, and you're not going to be able to get your scores in. So we know I, I'm not a big fan of stack, uh, stacking as a jungler, and I hope that logic explains why, specifically in the context of 5v5. Now you saw there, the Gren dies to the Mew, that is just so tragic, um, but the Mew's timed its ult well, and you know, good, good for them. They've played it really well. Now these guys, they don't have the best team comp right here, but man, this Valhalla team, they play so well as a five. They're really, really good. You can see the power of the Gren going in with the X attack. <laughs> Maybe just be a little bit careful of the Regieleki, but you can see the value of the engages. Okay, imagine if there was a little bit more crowd control there. Or maybe something that could have healed the Greninja, like a Blissey with a follow-up ult or something like that. Okay, you can see the value that can come out of there. So, super, super strong. Amazing. Now, I just want to point a little bit of attention to the time on the map here. There's an objective up. Really, you're only going to get value out of the objective if you are the blue team, right? The team that we're spectating because they've got that first tier there. The other team, if they win this Regieleki, they're not gonna get value out of it. Okay, or, so I shouldn't say that. If they push it, they're not gonna get value. They win the objective, they get value because now they can go farm. But you can see their team is looking to push, they're getting mega, mega greedy. Okay, I just wanna pause here before any of the big action happens. Have a look at the levels of everything. Greninja, 12. Machamp, 11. Gengar, 11. And also look at the experience bars. Okay, Slowbro, 10. Now watch what happens after this engage. Okay, this, this is never, 1% of the time it's a good idea. Every other time you're just throwing away experience. What the enemy team could have done is just take all the experience on the map while, the, while they're trying to kill the Regieleki and contest over farm and then get away and no one dies. But have a look at the levels now. Okay, Gren goes to 12, Gengar, uh, Gren goes to 13, Gren's 12, and look, in my opinion, I think they're getting a little bit uh, greedy here, going for a score. Um, but again, maybe that's the, I need to get that last stack on my attack weight or something like that, but in my opinion, I wouldn't have pushed that. There was there was buffs up, there's there's back uh, in deities, there's just farm, there's a bottom objective, so I... I if, if I was them, I definitely wouldn't have done that. I just would have prioritized putting myself in the best position for that final fight. So you can see the other team then gets value out of that mistake made. So we just need to be a little bit careful um, with the plays that we make throughout the game, um, specifically the ones in that last kind of two minutes, because mistakes, there they, they really they allow the other team to come back, especially if you've set yourself up for the first five minutes. So we're approaching this final fight here. Now I'm just gonna pause. This team is in an amazing position to rip. Okay, all they have to do is take care of the uh, Dragapult and the other team has got little, I'm gonna say, little chance to, to do much. Okay, take away that Dragapult and they're in trouble. So if they decide to rip here, that's amazing. They've got the Slowbro ult to zone out a Lucario or a Dragapult. I think this is probably a little bit of a risky play. It's probably not the one I would have made, but they've decided to rip. Uh, they back themselves for the secure, and that's how they decided to close out that game. So this is a really strong team, Valhalla um, V8. They're incredibly strong. I've watched them play a couple of times, and as soon as I saw them in the top spectating, I had to have a look and message um, Kazuma for his build. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and you get some value.